All right. We got pumpkin garden update number. I have no idea. <laughs> the um, pumpkins are about three weeks old. Doing pretty darn good. Approximately three weeks old. I don't remember exactly. We'll take a closer look at them. So, haven't quite started vining yet. They'll probably start doing that in about another week. Are you yeah, in another week. So, over here, you can see where they're growing. Got a bunch of leaves coming out. A few male flowers. Haven't seen any female flowers yet, but it's still pretty early. Over here, you can see these guys are a lot smaller than his brother over here. Are you here? Yeah, over here. Yes. And that's because um, when it came out, its baby leaves got munched on by something. And so it didn't have quite as much energy as these guys who have their infant leaves intact still. I don't know if they're going to catch up. But they're the Kakais, so I don't want to um, pull them out or anything like that. Last year this happened uh, just because um, one of the a couple of the plants that, um, were late coming up. And again, the same thing as its neighbors grew, it sort of overshadowed them and uh, didn't allow enough light energy for them to really get going and they never really produced anything uh, but I'll keep my fingers crossed anyways they still grow they're still growing they're kind of small but um, and you can't really see as big of a bundle of leaves where they're growing but they're still growing so I'll keep my hopes up I don't know what this is see over here you can see some damage on the leaf. Damage um, leaf. leaf. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be spreading or anything. So I don't know if they were chewed. But this one, this one like, this one doesn't have anything. And this one's perfect. So I don't know. I don't know if it's been chewed on. Um, if it was, or, or this one's the worst one. But this one actually looks like it was stepped on, which is understandable because we have a pretty large dog that we can't keep out. Uh, the new leaves coming in, they look fine. So I'll keep an eye on that. I don't want to introduce any pesticides if I can help it. I've had a problem uh, last year with earwigs. Yeah, pest emissions. So if I have to, if I absolutely, absolutely have to, then I'll go ahead and throw some pesticides on here. Here's an extra pumpkin. Uh, that's the one that I overcounted. And this one's funny. This one's just funny over here. This one, kind of being shadowed by its brother now. It came up, it was perfectly healthy, nothing happened to the... Um, baby leaves or anything like that you can see how tiny that baby leaf was I was like what the heck it has a normal sized pumpkin seed and yet it's like a midget or something you know this is this is my hand right here this is how small this pumpkin leaf is you know compared to, to its neighbor right here you can see it's basically as big as my hand you know and this one's about as big as a couple of fingers so I don't know if that one's going to grow or not. It, it, it has like one little teeny tiny leaf that's ready to come up. I'll just see what happens. Yeah, it got crashed. Okay, the corn surrounding it is doing okay. I don't think I like the idea of um, putting the corn and the uh, pumpkins in the same mound. Uh, because they do seem to compete for sunlight see this this big huge leaf is covering this one right here so that's going to take a while longer to grow than if it was in uh, proper sunlight over here uh, these ones are the other ones that i 
put in at the same time. Did have a bit of a problem with germination with the corn. Um, I put six in each mound. Right here I've got one, two, three, four that came up. So four of six, not too bad. Same thing over here, four of six. This one I got one, two, three, four, five, six. I got all six to come up. That was the only one. So those aren't bad, but over here toward the back so we get our real problems. Uh, real problems. Yeah. See, this mound got one, two, three, four. Four out of six. Not terribly bad, but not terribly good either. And over here, we got one. <laughs> one. One corn stalk came up. Okay. And then over here, we got two of them. But they're midgets. You know, you can tell how much smaller they are than the ones that came up at the exact same time. So I did replant a few more over here and over here. And I believe I put in one more over here. I don't remember exactly. And I don't even know if this is corn or this one right here. I don't know if it's corn or a weed. So I'll just let it go and, and see how it develops. Um, the sunflowers that I kept mentioning, one of them came up. It was sort of tiny looking. Look at, look at the boy. Yeah, it's your sword. <laughs> it was kind of tiny looking and some poop. And then the other came up. So, um, the, the, the seeds uh, that I used both for the uh, corn and the sunflowers, they were a little on the old side, a couple of years old, so that might have been what happened. Um, so... Oh well, next year I'll get new seeds, and that will be better. Um, next year, I am considering switching to pie pumpkins instead of jacks. Just because um, I'm getting more and more into consuming the pumpkins. And uh, the, the jacks aren't that flavorful. So you, you put them in something... Unless, it, unless you have a lot of it, 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 it's not as, you can't really recognize the flavor as well. Um, but if any, as anyone that has eaten pumpkin can attest, it's very, very filling. And that's what I use it for, is to stretch the um, cooking budget. You put pumpkin inside something and, you know, you only have to eat twice that day. <laughs> uh, just extras over here. I got my um, cherry tomato plant. Uh, we've already been noshing on that pretty well. Uh, the second cherry over here. Uh, we have a really big raccoon problem each year. And so I've had two tomatoes uh, stolen from us, basically. Um, you can see a couple over here. A couple more tomatoes over here. And this is interesting. I only just figured this out. So, over here, try to back up and get a full shot of them. Over here, these tomato plants are huge. They're twice the size of the ones that are over here, and they were planted at the same time. And these ones actually get less sunlight than these ones. So you'd think that we'd have an insane amount of tomatoes coming out of these plants, but we don't. Actually, we have That's more tomatoes ready. coming it's out ready. of this plant. It's ready. It's ready. Yeah, yeah, it's ready. You can eat it. See, like, he likes picking the fresh tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. I'll rinse it for you in a second. Mom, go plant mm -hmm. um, it's Yeah, we have more tomatoes coming out of, out of this one, and, and I just figured it's it out. It's yeah, it's not ready yet. It's little. Yeah, it's little and it's green, so it's not ready. Um, last year, over here, what we had was just beans. Beans and beans and beans, and we let them um, go until they set seed and use them as cooking beans. 
Yes, baby, it's little. And it's big and uh -huh, and, and you're way bigger and stronger. Mommy, take that. And so, um, what I think it is, is I think that these plants are getting too much nitrogen, basically. The nitrogen helps the greens grow, and they grow, and they grow, and they grow, and then uh, the energy, all the energy of the plant is being sent to producing the green shoots. Over here, though, where it has a more regulated um, source of nitrogen, the plants themselves haven't outgrown themselves, and instead they're putting their energies into setting tomatoes and you can see all along here all the tomatoes that are over here tomatoes? yeah the tomatoes Want some tomatoes? yeah go ahead you can eat it and then the last extra over here that um my melon i'm not a big fan of melon so i'm just letting it do whatever it wants to do get some um, growing up the side over here this is basically for my grandfather growing it for my grandfather He's the one that's been asking me for melons for the last two years. Pretty sure, pretty sure this is the first one right here. And I also think that these two have gotten fertilized. They're remarkably similar to the way that the pumpkins have gotten uh, have gone. They vine. The male flowers come up first. The female flowers follow further down the vine. Uh, but this one, I'm just letting the bees do their work, and they seem to really enjoy it. I was watching a bee uh, earlier today, just trying to get as far into that flower as it is possible to get into. So they do enjoy them. And I hope that will attract more bees when it comes time for the uh, pumpkins to be pollinated. Uh, but, I mean, unless it's way down the line of the season... I'm not going to uh, just wait for the uh, bees to do their, their job. I'm going to actually hand pollinate it. I'll record that and I'll also uh, try to keep them separated. Because like I said, I do have two different varieties this year and I don't really want them to cross. Because I want to be able to save the seeds and keep uh, perpetuating um, at least the cacao pumpkins this year. Um, next year I might switch to pie pumpkins. Maybe an Amish pie pumpkin because that one is a lot larger than the sugar pie pumpkin and it still has a pretty good flavor. So check back again. We'll let you see how these guys are doing. See you for now.